This is Cybert signing into General's Evolution on the map Forgotten Forest for a 1v1 between the USA Laser in the South. This is Spiritual Mango, but currently he's actually known as Spiritu Magno, which means something slightly different. He did eventually change his name to Spiritual Mango, uh, but I guess this is an older game. In the North, playing the Red, it's K. China nuke. We'll see if his nuclear battle masters are a problem. He's going for a war factory right off the bat. First GAT cannon is up. Supply center into that war factory. Meanwhile, on the USA side of the map, it is double supply center and a barracks. The war factory only after that supply center. Forgotten Forest. It is one of those maps where there is no need to expand. You've got these three supply docks, and that's it. One oiled Eric in the north, one oiled Eric in the south. K getting the cash back on the oiled Eric in the south, but Spiritu Magno, Magno getting the capture of that. War Factory is up to Gats. Now, this is a China nuke player, so he does have access to nuclear MiGs, nuclear battle masters. And okay, Spiritual Mango gets the cash back on the Oiled Eric in the north. Faster third up for Spiritual Mango. Uh, this is a relatively small map, and uh, with one player having access to nuclear vehicles, we will see if it is a big problem. No bridges on this map. There's a couple of times in the past where there have been a bunch of tanks on a bridge, and one of them gets ignited, and then everything gets blown up on the bridge. But in this case, it will not happen to K. We'll also see if K rushes out his propaganda center to get the stabilizing isotope upgrade. We do have a supply center, so he is going War Factory into the third supply. And, well, the laser turret catches that gat. Some early game aggression attempts, but ultimately, because they were stopped very easily, it is a very slow early game between these two. We've got a couple of laser Humvees, but they're being watched by this gat cannon and these gat tanks. Overall, both players kind of checking each other just taking a peek and saying are you playing super greedy have you left any obvious holes in your defense no okay we're gonna leave uh in this case gonna chip away at the command center will get one gat might be able to dive on some trucks but if he dives on the trucks oh actually no that gat survived that gat has a teeny tiny bit of health he's trying to body block with a war factory and he will actually get one of the humvees perfect positioning there by k and actually, unfortunately for Spiritual Mango, he didn't realize it, but there were two buildings with tank hunters inside of them. Spiritual Mango dropping off an engineer in the south, so Spiritual Mango will have three supplies and now three, two oil derricks as well. So this is pretty much maximum economy functionally that you're going to have on the map. Obviously, you could cross the map and take your opponent's supply centers, but if that happens, you probably don't need them. The game is probably already won. Double War Factory on the front line. There's the power plant on the other side of the map. Second, uh, no, Propaganda Center is coming up. So there's the Propaganda Center. It's off of one War Factory. Gats might turn around and kill this Oil Derrick. They managed to catch both Humvees against the edge of the map. And uh, if only... These Humvees had a little bit more space. They might have been able to escape, but this is a video game. They got the edge of the map to contest with, and that was nicely controlled by K. He doesn't kill the oil derrick, which makes me assume he's going to send an engineer down there to capture it. Doesn't even have a barracks. Oh, okay, barracks coming up now. So he had sold off his barracks long ago, and we are actually getting laser crusaders out onto the map. Spiritual Mango will be blessing us with some laser tanks, not just Rock Vs. And I do appreciate that K has spread out so many tank hunters in so many buildings, tagging and watching the map, tagging these units as they cross over, watching the map. 
This bunker is here, but it doesn't actually have anything inside of it, so it's going to be pretty easy to bust. There are nuclear battle masters here. We'll see if the stabilizing isotope upgrade has been purchased. I assume K didn't build tanks until he had that upgrade. Meanwhile, Spiritual Mango is sneaking some forces by on the right side. Laser Humvees are very powerful, but they are still low health Humvees, so as soon as they get jumped on, they can be eliminated very quickly. And in this case, two, three of them will go down to that Gat Cannon, and I'm not even really finishing off the supply truck. A bit unfortunate with all of these laser units that they are not finding much damage. Both oil derricks still under the control of Spiritual Mango, giving him a 4k income per minute advantage over his opponent. Uh, Flashbang's going to be cleaning up these tank hunters, and the ra the rangers will be able to clear those buildings. So a good choice by Spiritual Mango to de-garrison those buildings by force and get K's position, get K K's units out of there to open up those positions. Laser Crusaders are pretty good. K trying to micro his tanks as well as he can. Nuclear Battle Masters do eat up those Laser Crusaders, and now they're going to be able to eat up the Avengers as well. Two of the Avengers going down. Meanwhile, the building's being taken over. K sends off a Carpet Bomb? Or, okay, it's going to be a Mine Drop in the middle of the map hoping to get that cluster mine to shut down this area. Meanwhile, the buildings will be broken. Spiritual Mango, again, tired of dealing with these garrisons, is finally going to forcibly de-garrison K's units. Knock the buildings down, stop them from being utilized. A couple of nuclear battle masters have snuck their way onto the western edge of the map, and that's... Clear in mind's the old-fashioned way. Just drive over top of them and hope you've got enough units to survive. The Avengers here to zap those rockets, making the bunkers that much less effective. Get cannons on the front line, get tanks as well as a couple of minigunners going to be walking their way to the front line, or I guess the Rebel Guard, not actually minigunners, from K. And no aircraft just yet from our nuclear China player. He may be able to get a couple of these supply trucks as well. Reinforcements heading to the front line. Most of the Laser Crusaders have been eliminated. A couple of them still here, but they're low on health. They finally do fall. It's just the Avenger here to zap those rockets as, la as long as he can. But with double bunker on the front lines, it is very difficult for uh, any kind of tanks to sustain an attack against all of those rockets. In some cases, ECMs are better, but you are uh, leaving yourself to the RNG of their missile deflects, which sometimes are very bad. Sometimes the missile deflects go uh, just into other units, and so it does just as much damage. It's just maybe not in the order that the attacker wants. Both players spending their income very efficiently, constantly below a thousand credits in the bank, which can be difficult. The income gets absolutely silly in Gen Evo. I mean, in Zero Hour as well, it can get silly. It just takes a little while longer, uh, but it can get very silly in Gen Evo, the amount of cash that players have. Tanks moving in. He's going to try and force this engagement. He's got some missile defenders here as well, which with no ECMs means it's going to be short work on these tanks. No need to laser lock anything. It's just a couple of nuclear battle masters left. They're going to have to drive forward if they want to get any more kills. Red Guards have mostly been eliminated. Four of them have survived this attack, and they are going to rank up a couple of times part Particle tank is now out here on the front line, and man, these Red Guards are actually surviving a super long time. The Missile Defenders finally clearing them up. A couple of tank hunters making their way to the front line. A little bit too late to the party. Need to get on out of there. Gat makes it past the defenses, but this laser turret will be able to deal with it. Laser Patriot is a powerful thing. We should be seeing some kind of air power... I would say Air Force, but it might actually just be support weapons or support powers getting called in by K. He needs to eliminate these power plants. There's two upgraded power plants near the con yard, and that would help shut down these attacks. If you just have to worry about the infantry because all of the laser units have been depowered, it makes a lot of these attacks less effective. I guess this one, you'd really only lose the laser Humvee. And I think the particle tank would still be online, so uh, that attack wouldn't change much at all. But we'll see if 
Air support comes into effect. Particle tanks going to be able to burn down a couple of these nuclear battle masters. And, well, these laser Humvees, they will get eliminated, but the missile defenders behind them will get a couple more kills. Warthogs coming in, going to try and bust the bunkers. Go for the trucks. We'll get both of the trucks and both of the bunkers at the same time. Spiritual Mango keeping up the pressure. He's actually going to be just charging up his particle tank on that one Gat Cannon. And then he's going to have to get out of town. He's going to get stomped by the tanks moving in. Spiritual Mango finds another kill with the Particle Tank, but ultimately, the Gats will get the kill. Okay, still able to hold on to a couple of these structures. Would love to see him take this one as well. It is a bit close to enemy, perhaps too close for comfort. Gats moving in, Missile Defenders and Laser Humvees will trade out happily versus these units. They are pretty much on their front line, so it is do or die for these units. Uh, Cluster Mine comes in, in between the two, will re perhaps require a uh, some kind of scan to reveal. One supply truck goes down, the second one does survive, but the supply center will also survive. Gats moving in, a couple of nuclear battle masters are here. On the other side of the map, it's just a couple of spy drones in the base of K. K has not cleaned them up. And still... Not much air force from either player. Some players do love their air force, and I feel like K normally has more of an air presence than we see in this game. Adding on two internet centers at once. Going to be boosting his income. Spiritual Mango only 2K per minute ahead of his opponent. He lost the oil derrick in the north, and then K captured the oil derrick in the south. So Spiritual Mango's advantage, not quite what it once was, but with these internet centers coming in, I think K is going to be getting close to the supply drop zone count of Spiritual Mango. Couple of Laser Patriots on the front line. Good way to hold off those armies until you have a chance to reposition. Gats showing up in mass. One Gat doesn't kill a building very quickly, but man, when you've got 12 Gats or however many are here, I guess just nine, only nine Gats, uh, you can kill buildings pretty quickly. A couple of nuclear battle masters. All right, good disengage by K, not willing to just throw them away. Finally, we got ourselves an airfield. I feel like the airfield is the biggest dot on the map, so whenever you see them, it is just a giant red square on the mini-map. It is one of those uh, very noticeable things. That is a, uh, a big tell that someone has gone air if their base just has these giant squares in it. Uh, they are even bigger than the command center squares. They are just a giant structure on the mini-map. That supply truck is uh, sent to the wrong spot. All of the nuclear battle masters going down here. Uh, K overstepping his his bounds. He should not have gone there. He does have a speaker tower pretty far out. Will be a nice early warning system for K, and it will get burned down basically instantly. Nuclear MIGs will be on the way soon, if they aren't already under construction. Particle Cannon does get jumped on. There is still a second one, and there's lots of Laser Crusaders here as well. Nuke is now online. K might actually just be getting that for the upgrade. This may be one of those matches where both players have agreed to no super weapons. Sometimes players will decide amongst themselves to do a no super weapons match and so you'll have a 1v1 in particular where no one is building a super weapon on purpose uh, the difference would be that the nuclear missile does give you an option as a uh, China nuke player there's an upgrade associated with it mix strike or not a mix strike oh this actually might just be a regular old nuke it does get uh, shot at couple of firestorms get ignited. Laser Crusader is not going to be able to get the kill. The body blocks are close to perfect here, 4K. And he will not get the shutdown. The upgrade finishes moments before these Laser Crusaders get the kill. There's the kill on the nuke. 
but there's also the kill on almost every single Laser Crusader. Stealth Reveal comes in. A couple of these spy drones will be getting shut down, but that propaganda center is gone. So goodbye to that. And that is two golden Laser Crusaders blasting their way through just about everything. Cluster Mine coming in. And yep, yeah, it's going to be a big miss on that Cluster Mine. Tank Hunters are here. Laser Crusaders are going to just hope that they can get the airfield. Moab lands and cleans up the Tank Hunters. That is definitely one way to do it. Eat a couple of mines as this Laser Crusader will die deep in enemy territory behind enemy lines. The body blocked nuclear, nuclear reactors have finished up. One will get destroyed and the others I think will survive. This has opened up a huge opportunity for Spiritual Mango back at home. He has had all of the pressure taken off of him. He has been able to completely distract and confound K and K's defenses. Meanwhile, the attack that follows is not particularly fast or furious. On the other side of the map, a nuke strike comes in, or a MIG strike rather, comes in, ignites a firestorm on top. Well, those tanks are done for on top of that supply center and a couple of uh, other oh arty strike comes in on top of the supply center damages a couple of trucks nuclear migs will clean up both of the particle tanks so that is the end of that assault spiritual mango however still with a plus 10k per minute uh, a total of two well one and a half grand per minute advantage over his opponent one mine is left here uh, I don't know if it just... Whoa! Two more particle tanks gone! Those nuclear MiGs finding their targets. Okay, finally that mine does get cleaned up. More nuclear MiGs will find targets blasting through their enemy units. Nuclear MiGs getting off the deck. War Factory will be reestablished. And now that we're late into the game in terms of support powers, even though there are no super weapons in this match, there are late game superpowers that have been unlocked that can help disrupt your opponent's frontline defenses and uh, do damage to get you closer to the end of the game. Nuclear MiGs again finding their targets. Not enough to knock down any of these tanks. The misses were enough that they uh, didn't actually get the kills. A couple of these tanks potentially uh, vulnerable to the radiation damage as they drive through these areas. And that tank will barely survive, but the Humvee gets caught in the splash damage. The nuclear MiGs firing for great effect and will find the kills. Inferno Cannon, uh, minimum fire distance being abused here by a couple of laser Humvees. And Spiritual Mango's uh, momentum has been robbed from him. Those nuclear MiG attacks have been doing an amazing job to shut down anything coming out from spiritual mango fuel air bomb on top of the war factory nope on top of the airfield i guess that is the better target and the migs moments away from landing one of them does get caught in the explosion there warthog strike on top of the propaganda center will find a kill there damage to the uh, war factory as well but not enough to clean it up the counter attack will be Carpet Bomb? Ah, uh, yep. Carpet Bomb coming in from the China player. K will get nothing for it. A couple of bombs do drop. He actually, somewhat luckily, grabs a laser Humvee, essentially by chance. Double Vent Inferno Cannon is there, but not a lot of support. Won't be able to ignite the Firestorm by himself. Nuclear MiGs finding more and more of Spiritual Mango's targets. K is burning through the middle of the map. EMP or cluster mine? Oh, it is actually a cluster mine. This is one of those things that you can do to waste the time of the automated defenses. The Patriot lasers. Oh, or just drive over the... Yeah, drive over the mines. That works too. MIGS will find a kill, but they also find the friendly fire that kills off that Inferno cannon. K still holds the oil derrick in the south. Gat Cannon here, a little bit too late to defend, and that Humvee dies to the radiation after the mass explosion. 
Battle Masters are going to try and punch through. They will get the surround and the kill on that Laser Patriot. This is buying some amount of time for Spiritual Mango. He does have a couple of Raptors. Only one that we see right now. He has at least one Raptor, which are decent at sniping uh, units and buildings, but normally you need more than one. And in this case, you definitely need more than one, despite how weak that airfield was. The tanks have busted through at least some of the defenses. Two, three tanks nearly going down in this initial assault. Those laser patriots can be difficult to deal with. Upgraded power plants are now vulnerable, though. Strategy center as well. Not that there's a lot of particle tanks out on the field, but those upgraded power plants could cause some real problems for the laser units that remain on the field. Laser Humvee, Laser Crusader are here for the defense. Cold Fusion Reactor with the upgrade will not get taken out. The Raptor gets the kill. Goes double vet, not golden yet. Oil Derek in the south still under the control of K. Internet Center getting deployed here. This is one of those maps that you can sometimes run out of space with how big some of these buildings are with the way the terrain is broken up. You can run out of space in your main base and that does make arty strikes, fuel air bombs, all of those splash damagey support powers quite powerful. Oh, he's going for the power plant. He gets the power plant. Not enough to take the power down. If only K had had that support power a little bit earlier. Fuel air bomb. No, it's a Moab on top of the war factory, on top of the airfield. Finally, knocking it down. The carpet bomb is going to be the counter attack. The cross map damage is what K is hoping for. Okay, he won't really get much. A couple of bombs do drop. Those laser anti-air defenses are a little bit too strong. Meanwhile, the Laser Humvee is going to be taking a chunk out of that Helix. Well, that is the end of that frontline defense, but that is also the end of these two Laser Humvees, which get caught between two bunkers and eliminated. But Laser Patriot on the front line will take a lot of damage before it ever finishes completing. Infantry getting cleaned up, and the Helix will mostly be repaired back up to almost full health. Uh, Raptors won't get the kill on the Oil Derrick just yet. 22 minutes into the game, and the Oil Derrick is still standing. Swapped hands a number of times. K has control of it now. Migs back on the run in the south. Laser Helix able to... Or not Laser Helix, but just regular Helix. Oh, this is a golden opportunity to get the power plant kills going. And the EMP moments to late moments too early uh nuclear migs on the supply center not able to really do very much the raptors catch one of them but not the other and that's going to be the end of the oil derrick in the south 22 30 classic timing for that oil derrick but uh anyways there is a chance that what k can do is ignite a domino effect of sniping power plants. We see this in all Command & Conquer games, really. But if you can get them to that breaking point... Okay, Warthog Strike on the Command Center, not really gonna be super effective. But if you can get them to that tipping point, and then you can just cascade power plant after power plant, striking them down... Whoa, nuclear MIGs getting cleaned up, but there's a number of Humvees sitting in the radiation as well. Spiritual Mango with his 10k per minute income disadvantage against K still bringing the fight. Spiritual Mango has a 30k total resources gathered advantage over his opponent, though. Cluster Mine on top of the entrance of the base. Always a good way to slow down an attacking army if you're a China player. Laser Patriots on the front line. They're struggling to be established, but of course they can get denied by, or they can get chipped away at by K. So then if they ever come online, they get cleaned up quickly. Carpet Bomb lands a couple more shots. That command center on the front line just slowly but surely getting worked away at. And both players with these forward command centers hoping to control the middle of the map. Fuel air bomb will be attempting the counterattack. Won't find the damage. The anti-air is too strong, too far afield for those air support powers. Supply drop or spies drone is the USA equivalent of those support powers that are just there to distract the opponent's anti-air. And because this is a relatively small map, 
it can be can be defended there's a combination of garrisons and uh automated defenses static d that holds down most of the map very easily raptors get a snipe on an overlord tank those nuclear overlords uh can be powerful can be not always that effective airfields always a big potential target for the usa player and yeah those humvees they survive the first shot but then it's sitting in the radiation that really does them in raptors in the sky Okay, with a decent amount of cash in the bank. He's maybe been a little bit slow on the macro. He's given up on his war factories, it seems. He believes in the power of air, and his land army hasn't been doing as much. Yeah, so I assume these guys have gone, have deliberately chosen no uh, super weapons, which super weapons can be necessary in team games. They tend to be less necessary in 1v1s, but maybe on this map they are. Maybe Forgotten Forest is uh, too locked up of a map to uh, justify no super weapons. We do have an arty strike coming in somewhere. Oftentimes it is on the back line. Ooh! Gets one of the raptors on the deck. Supply drop zone takes a bit of damage as well. We got a carpet bomb, maybe? This carpet bomb perhaps is just slowly chipping away at that command center. Oh no, the command center is gone. So the carpet bomb does land. Most of the bombs do fall. Meanwhile, on the right side of the map, it's going to be a couple of raptors going down. It's going to be a couple of uh, buildings busted as well. Kay, I think, had an internet center over there. Command center coming up here on the north side of Spiritual Mango's base. It is close to the front line of K, and K has been... Somewhat successfully pushing out the front line. He has slowly but surely taken over the middle of the map, pushing Spiritual Mango further and further away. This mine drop from minutes ago finally coming into effect. And once again, K's fortified positions, the bunkers, the sieve structures, everything coming together to make his defense so hard to crack. Raptors swing in, they snipe a command center, but they but K has already got so much build radius here. It's gonna take a little while to clear out those buildings, and by that time K might have another command center up. Nuclear missiles do get denied there as spiritual mangoes missile zapping Avengers will nullify any air attacks. Nuclear Overlord goes down. Laser Patriots at the front line standing strong for now. One of them gets broken. The other still exists. Uh, EMP or Cluster Mine, either way, it didn't actually land on the front line there. And we have K continuing to push forward, trying to break into Spiritual Mango's base. And he barely may not have enough to actually come through clean. Raptor's coming in for another strike, cleaning up another Gat Cannon. Both players have been pretty evenly matched in macro and in production. But the weight of positioning and the momentum is in the corner of K. Part of that is due to those aircraft, part of it is due to his artillery, his support powers, his slow chipping away at Spiritual Mango. But Spiritual Mango's defense still stands. Couple of more laser Humvees getting eaten up, and we'll see if the constant parade push across the map 4K can keep up. Oh, three more laser Humvees get burned up. And unlike a lot of verse laser games that we see where it comes down to those power plant snipes, playing a huge role. Raptors come in. They manage to find a couple of kills. MIG strike comes in. Nuke shots land, and it's going to be a carpet bomb on top of some power plants and the production of Spiritual Mango. One of the war factories gets shut down. Another laser vehicle gets eaten up, and the triple command center is laying down three laser patriots at a time, but can the command center defend itself because Spiritual Mango doesn't have a bank. K is starting to build 
build a bank, which means when he deploys these buildings, three, four of them at one time, two defenses, two infrastructure buildings, they go up and they complete. EMP lands on top of the command center, shutting down one of the laser patriots and allowing these ma these nuclear battle masters through one particle tank i don't even know where that guy came from one particle tank makes his way to the front line and the nuclear migs come in with massive shots on top of the supply drop zones on top of some of the constructing static d as well carpet bomb is coming in and land a couple of shots command center takes some damage but even the barracks survives that onslaught and these nuclear battle masters have found the perfect position away from the static d Raptors doing what they can, but it's sort of a fight and against the inevitable is how it feels at this time. 16k per minute in income, 4k, and he has finally caught up with Spiritual Mango in terms of total resources gathered. There are less than a thousand credits difference between these two players when once Spiritual Mango had 30 grand of a difference. I don't know what that was, fuel air bomb or something, but it ignited in the atmosphere and not on the ground where K is positioned. K's push has slowed down. He has spent his bank to zero, but the parade push keeps coming. So even if the units on the front line get eliminated, there's more reinforcements crossing the map. Warthog strike comes in. It's gonna do massive damage. It actually, it gets Wow, man, those nuclear MiGs, that's what it was igniting in the atmosphere. Those nuclear MiGs when they hit air targets, which is not something that I think I've actually seen in Gen Evo before. But when they hit air targets, it is, uh, it is quite funny looking. You get to see all of those effects landing kind of at the same time because they are not covered up by the ground or covered up by other units in the, uh, the mushroom cloud. There goes two power plants, one of them upgraded, one of them not, and also massive damage to a third power plant. The push just keeps coming. Strike after strike after strike. The nuclear MiGs, a big reason as to why K has been able to crack open the base of Spiritual Mango. Mind drop there, but every moment that Spiritual Mango's forces spend attacking mines, they are not spending that time attacking K's units. More damage gets done. I don't think this War Factory will fall. I think Spiritual Mango will be able to hold on to it. But the next wave of units is here. The mix of tank busters. That might have actually done more friendly fire than against the enemy as that nuclear strike comes in and it will actually burn down one of these tanks. Yeah, the radiation knocks down that tank. But fortunately, the stabilizing isotope upgrade keeps K's forces from killing their own friends. Stops it from being a blue on blue, so to speak. Inferno cannons getting sniped. Spiritual Mango, if this was a 2v2, I would be all for him fighting this out to the last man and rocket. Uh, in this case, K has 10 grand more per minute in income, and he keeps sniping production facilities of Spiritual Mango. But Spiritual Mango absolutely fighting it out to the last man and rocket. This is the opposite of what we sometimes see where two players have a big army and one or big-ish armies and uh, one player gets a bit of a disadvantage, kind of realizes that there's no way out of the game and then leaves and it's like, ah, we wanted to see the big fight. Uh, in this case, we've seen many big fights. Spiritual Mango is making K work for every inch of it. Moab lands, shuts down the barracks, but again, there's just so much more behind the scenes. Carpet Bomb comes in, MIG strike as well on top of the airfield, no refueling for these Raptors, and they just get suicided into the enemy. The restart, really, you're rebuilding. Spiritual Mango is truly a madman. He's got like almost no cash in the bank for most of this, and he is still trying to get out more units. The slow crush, the inevitable, reaches forward from K. 
to the other side of the map. Spiritual Mango holding out as long as he possibly can, even maybe getting some, getting a couple of counterattacks onto the other side of the map. He does still hold this building. This is the one bit of defense that hasn't been broken. And K is just bringing desolation upon Spiritual Mango. This is all out war and all out destruction. And this is the one cohort that has survived. Dragon tanks, if only they brought nuclear fire to the front line. Gats, Red Guard, tank hunters, Everything is coming to the front line. Nuclear battle masters, nuclear MIGs. Everything is here. The supply truck's still working. The band is still playing. The ship has sunk. Even an, e even an EMP on top of the airfield. On top. Oh, is that? No, okay. I thought I saw the, the bottom of that structure, and for a moment I thought that was another... Uh, another command center. I was like, are you kidding me? Oh, it's actually an RD strike coming in on top of the power plants knocks both of them down and K is getting the completionist trophy in this case Black napalm on those flame tanks gonna burn down those supply drop zones Two buildings left. There's one more. Okay. He knows about it. He is already targeting it K will bring the end of the game. Spiritual Mango really making him work for it. At many times, this swing back and forth between those players would have led you to believe that either one of them was going to win. But in the end, it is that slow, macro, overwhelming crush from K. And yeah, for most of the game, Spiritual Mango had that income advantage at 1.30 grand in his favor. But in the end, K reigns supreme. And that'll do it for this game, for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And this is Cyber signing out.